It's time for another tale from the Glass Guarded World, with Brian as Paxton the Human Cleric, Ashley as Tara Dane the Human Fighter, Danielle as Athelflaed the Halfling Rogue and Monk, and me, Mike, as the DM. The adventurers have returned to the tower of the wizard Mun the Immortal, having been successful in the mission on which he sent them. Well, sort of. As they discussed broken rivers and other historical matters, one of Mun's apprentices burst into the room, announcing that yet another river had broken. Some background might be helpful here. There are four rivers that fall out of the glass walls of this world. The River Reliable, the Ardianel River, the Hilt River, and the Gods River. The Gods River started having problems about 60 years ago, causing it to become known as the Broken River. The Hilt River marks a border between the Free Cities and the Iron Empire. The Free Cities is a loose confederation of city-states made up of a variety of sentient species. Humans, elves, halflings, gnomes, orcs, etc. They have everything. The Broken River marks their northern border, which means that they now have two malfunctioning rivers. The Free Cities are primarily known for their agricultural output, and they are independent artisans. And this new river problem will likely lead to serious difficulties with the former of those two industries. The Iron Empire is a dictatorship ruled by the Stoneslinger Dynasty, or a dynasty if you're from the UK. I personally prefer that pronunciation, but I guess I would sound weird saying it. The nobility are mostly humans and orcs, with a few dwarves in the mountains. The Iron Empire has been aggressive toward its neighbors, the Great Forest and the Free Cities, in the past. It is currently ruled by a young, impetuous, irresponsible, and impulsive young man who recently emerged from the control of a Regency government. This is the political context in which our heroes discover that one of the world's four rivers has just started dying. delivered by one of the Wizard Mun's apprentices, that the Hilt River has begun to break. And you all know that the Hilt River marks the border between the Iron Empire and the Free Cities. One of the five primary nations is the Iron Empire, uh, which is ruled by an emperor, and it borders the Great Forest on one side and the Free Cities on the other. And the river that divides the Free Cities from the Iron Empire has apparently begun to break. And the Iron Empire is, like, literally on the other side of the world from where yeah. we're at. Yeah, diametrically opposite. Okay. That's right. So it's the, what, Eastern River? The, um... Because we're at the Western Bubble? Well, I'll, uh, maybe I should show you guys a map. Yeah. You have a map handy? Mm -hmm. Great. So which river broke? The Hilt River. The Hilt River. So, Iron Empire, Hilt River. Okay, so the... Southeastern River. <laughs> yeah. Moon hears this news, and he leaps up out of his chair, and he paces back and forth. And he says, this changes things significantly. He turns to his apprentice, Sibley, this young woman, and he says, send out the following message over the ministry network. And Sibley gets out a stylus and a wax tablet, and he begins dictating. And he says, Foresight's prediction has been proven approximately correct. This must be the beginning of the turn. I will look into finding the remaining truths of foresight and continue to investigate where the water goes. We can expect Emperor Stoneslinger to aggressively push toward the Great Forest to seize resources. His vizier will no longer be able to constrain him. We should warn the Council of Two immediately with a verifiable message. I will look into that as well. Stoneslinger will probably not push into the Free Cities, but the lack of water will nonetheless create large groups of refugees. We should be prepared to take them in and push our aqueduct projects even more aggressively. Even more people will need water now. Also, the glass breakers have renewed their efforts. They will probably become even more aggressive. We should step up the wall patrols. Now is the time to put all our efforts to work. Call in all your favors. Use that gold you'd been saving up. If the Prime Minister has any additional instructions, I hope that she will send them shortly. Time is of the essence. Now, Sibley, send that on. No, wait. Am I forgetting anything? And he looks at all of you. Didn't uh, Finn have something, a message to deliver, I believe? Or 
he wanted to look into he had some research he wanted to look into um that uh someone had left him uh some notes about yeah i think um, it was a personal uh quest about right. why are some animals have like bigger versions and others don't right mm -hmm. right he want why are there giant earthworms and pill bugs but not say foxes right um but yeah that was a, a sort of a personal thing okay was there any other important stuff that you think Mun should put in this note I mean, anything that we know about that is important, Mun already knows about, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, he says, very well. Uh, love and big hugs, Mun. <laughs> and Sibley raises an eyebrow at the last bit, and Mun says, I always get sentimental in emergencies. Now get going. And Sibley rushes out of the room, and he turns back to you and says, now then we have some things to work out. I will set out for the seashore. In the meantime, I have two options for the rest of you. First... A verifiable message must be delivered to the Council of Two in the Wildlands, also known as the Great Forest. They don't entirely trust us, but they would believe a magically protected message. I have an idea for how you could get there quickly, if you're interested. On the other hand, I could also have one of my apprentices take care of that. There's a second task that is much more well, dangerous and much more important. We need to find the remaining truths of foresight. Tell me, how many of them have you heard of or read? Can I uh, relate back to uh, Dunstan? Sure. See if... Uh... Um, you want to think of anything else you know about foresight? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, let's see. Uh, roll a, a history check. D20, uh, plus, if you have a history bonus. Yeah, uh, let's see. 16 plus 117. Okay, so... Um, you don't know any... I think, has, has the rest of the party shared the ones they have with you? I think they did, right? I think, um... I feel uh, like we have, because mm -hmm. we, yeah. we saw the one, and we told her about it. Or maybe we didn't. I'm not sure. So Finn wrote down the Truths of Foresight whenever we came across them, right. and I have Finn's backpack. Right. So I I don't remember them off the top of my head, but I could look through the backpack and... I think Wait, Ashley has them written down I as well. I have some of them. Um, I didn't like compile them in a nice orderly way. I know one of them is like when the rivers start breaking, it's only a matter of time before they all break. 50 years, I think. Okay, right. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, then, so it, one of them was when the river ceases to function. One of the ones you found was when the river ceases to function, when a river ceases to function, you have perhaps 50 years left, so you must consider escape. Uh, the second truth. Okay, yeah, that's the second truth. And then... Uh, do not try to break through the walls. That would destroy your world, is one of them. And first truth is uh, these are the messages from Foresight or something. Therefore, your benefit, heed them. So, uh, Athelflaed, you have heard the ones that they've mentioned. Mm -hmm. You have heard yourself that there are four or five of these messages. You don't know any more than the ones they've told you. Um, you've heard rumors, Dunstan had heard rumors, that there may be more than that, that are sort of secret. Okay. And did he mention who might have those secrets? No, Any chance? they would be the cultists, but okay. as he told you, the cult is dead. Okay. Evidently not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um... A lot of pamphlets going around for a dead cult. Moon will tell you that his understanding is that there aren't any active cultists. Uh, there's graffiti from back when the cult used to be active, but his understanding is that the cult itself died out. Um, you can still find some of the, the, their remains, some of their um, stuff they left behind. So he says, I have heard that there are seven truths of foresight. The numbering varies from version to version, but the first four are well attested. The first one that I have seen, again, the numbering may vary. The first one I have seen is, I leave you these messages for your benefit. Eat them and you may yet survive after so many others failed. The second one, your world is a trap, but do not try to escape until the right time. The outside may be worse. When a river ceases to function, you have perhaps 50 years left. This is the third one. The turn will come quickly, so you must consider escape. And the fourth one, do not try to break through the walls. 
that would destroy your world and everyone in it. Again, these are the four that I have seen. I have heard that there are three more, but they are secret. I've only seen mention of them. I've never seen them directly. I've seen other versions of these three truths, but sometimes they conflict with each other. Some have claimed that the glass breakers have tried to corrupt the messages and sow confusion. I want to know the truth. As far as I know, there's only one place to find that, and you're not going to like it. You've already seen the western bubble. There's another, larger bubble, in the glass on the eastern side of the world. I have never seen it. In fact, it is very cold there, and the Iron Empire guards its territory jealously. Nonetheless, it is said that all the truths of foresight can be found there. I need someone to travel there and bring back the entire set of messages, or act on whatever it is they say. It will not be easy. I can probably get you to Drongledoon quickly, as is a northern city in the Iron Empire. But after that you will have to pass Fort Iron Crown, travel through the mountains, and cross the wasteland beyond. The Iron Empire is xenophobic, aggressive, and not fond of cults. They will not be happy to see you, and they will not want to help you with this mission. You may find some support from the oppressed common folk, however. The means of transportation that I have in mind might make it possible for you to complete both missions quickly. Perhaps that is too much to ask. Both of you and of the person doing the transporting. And then there is a third option, which you should consider seriously, especially when you consider that you owe me nothing. You could return to your homes, to your family and friends, and help them deal with the coming crisis. If so, I understand. It is better to die with loved ones than alone. I was planning to send Finn's body back to his family in arrival on a ship leaving from Lutonhaven. You could be on that ship, Miss Dane. You should talk it over with each other. Also, you should decide what you want to do with Lumpen. I say L Lumpen comes with us. Um, I like that that's the first thing that we make a decision on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't have any family left, unfortunately. So, uh, I'm sorry to hear that. I would rather try and save the world than say goodbye. Very well. Again, I have been skeptical historically of this foresight, but under the circumstances, we are about 60 years out from the God's River breaking. That's only 10 years off of the prediction. I think it perhaps is good to take things seriously. What do we know about the cultists? Like, who were they? Where did they stay? Uh, the, one of the natures of cults like this is that they're secretive. Uh, they, they could have been anybody. They had a temple uh, near the town of New Tower. Um, and my understanding is that it's falling into ruin. Uh, they uh, were ordinary people who believed in a god. I don't really know any more than that. Now, uh, one of the things that you mentioned, Mun, was that uh, there's the possibility of us doing both of these things, tra traveling to the Iron Empire by way of the Great Forest so that we could deliver the message and seek out the truth right. of foresight. So here's my idea there. I know a shopkeeper, a strange man named Sigbert. We know him. <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah, yes. he's our well, buddy. He's, he seems to engage in rather pointless magical tinkering, but he is, in fact, an expert on teleportation magic. He doesn't like to follow the usual magistracy rules about spellcasting, however, so he's not always welcomed by the other keepers of arcane knowledge. I have pulled some strings to allow him to keep operating here, so he owes me. That should be good for at least one trip. He should, I think, be able to teleport you from Zabrafeld to both the city of Two in the Great Forest and to the town of Drongledoon in the Iron Empire. However, I don't think he would be willing to take you on both of those. So you may have to do him some sort of favor. I don't expect he'll send you on an epic quest, but that doesn't mean he will ask you to do something easy. He might even just want money, a lot of money. I'll give you 500 gold in case that's his primary concern. Fair enough. All right. And, uh, oh, here's another card that you can give him. You'll find that the first card I gave you is now blank. So he pulls out another piece of small, stiff cardstock, and it says Mun the Immortal on it, and he hands it to you. He says, oh, wait, you'll need another card to verify your message to the Council of Two. Show them this card to verify that I sent you, and then they'll expect you to hold it while you summarize recent events. It will make it difficult to lie, so be prepared for that. 
And before you ask, that function can only be used once. So this council of two, uh, I got I got a question about them. Namely, uh, who the heck are they? The Great Forest is ruled by a council of mostly elves. Uh, they have two consuls who head the council, and they make decisions for the uh, the nation. Ah, so it's a council. Council of two. It's called the Council of Two for two reasons. Number one, it's in the city of two. (laughs) Number two, there are two consuls who head the council. And then there are other members, junior members of the council as well. That's too many twos. Mm -hmm. I'm terribly sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I think we have been great patrons of Sigbert, and he will let us travel. Certainly. I agree. One other thing. How did that bottle of Etten friend work out for you? I started getting flashbacks. I didn't know we used it. Well, I would have hoped you would have used it, that and the, the bottle of fire breath, but I know that that works. I was hoping you had some, uh, some something to report about the bottle of Etten Friend. Oh, sorry, you, you didn't know if it worked? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I had all the theory suggested it ought to work perfectly fine. Did it? it Thankfully. Yeah, to a degree. Well, what went wrong? Did anything go wrong? It's just kind of difficult uh, having two personalities in the same body. There's uh, sometimes a little bit of a uh, shuffle back and forth over who's going to do what, mm. you know. I had a, a couple more bottles I thought you might be interested in, but if you don't want them, I'm sure I can find someone. Who oh, no, we definitely them. want them. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I see. Very well. And he reaches into his robes and produces out of nowhere two more bottles of Friend. You might want to stock up on other equipment you might need. Uh, perhaps talk to Sigbert, get some potions of healing. Unfortunately, there has been some discussion. Well, unfortunately for you, there has been some discussion in the in the magistracy of uh, putting a maximum price of ten gold pieces per potion of healing on uh, healing potions that would make them cheaper for you to buy. But uh, that hasn't happened yet, so it would make it uh, inconvenient for you to wait, I think, for that to happen and get cheaper potions. So you might want to buy them now. Okay. Is there a, a nice shop in town where we can take care of some of this? Uh, there this... is a magic shop here, yes. Uh, there's the Wizard of Waz. Um, I would suggest going to Zauberfeld and talking to Sigbert. Sure. Maybe he can offer us a deal. Perhaps. Did you want to talk at all about that incident with the wine? I certainly do. So uh, are you comfortable with me discussing that in front of your friends? Yeah, they they know about as much of the situation as I do, if indeed we are talking about the same situation. So I used to use that, and before I had it, other people used to use that goblet, to test people to see if they might be an observer. It was a magic item created back in the days when people were somewhat paranoid about the existence of observers. How do you feel about observers? I have no feelings about them one way or the other. They're simply people. So what happens if an observer drinks from that cup? They tend to faint. But I didn't. But you didn't. But it did seem to have some effect on you. My suspicion is that you are a former observer, which is something I've never heard of before. Yep. I... That's... Do, you, do you have a jewel on your body somewhere? Not anymore. Ah, interesting. Do you remember anything about having been an observer? I remember waking up in a cave surrounded by dead bodies with uh, kind of crystal crumblies all over me that seemed like someone maybe whacked me in the back of the head and smashed my crystal and <gasps> stole my observerhood from me. <laughs> but I can't remember anything about that day other than what happened after I woke up. That's very interesting. I um, I don't know exactly what happened to all of them. Uh, they were hunted down, as you may know. I don't know if there are any left, however. I must say you looked familiar to me the first time I saw you. You must consider, when one has been alive as long as I have, you see a great many people and it's hard to remember them all. I'm pretty sure at some point in the past I have met you, but I can't be sure. Now, Mun, in all your wisdom, might you know anything about um, what kind of rocks go in the back of an observer's head? Because I've been trying to shove everything that seems like it would fit in there, and I haven't had a lick of luck. Well, first, let me make something clear to you. Do you understand that observers were created 
with the world. That is, they have been around since the very beginning of the world, which means you are approximately 2,000 years old. Hmm. I did not know that. Yes. And I have studied these matters for a long time. And my understanding is that the magic that made you an observer was there when you appeared in this world and when I appeared here. And that means I suspect you cannot be made an observer again, except perhaps by whoever did it to you in the first place. Hmm. Now, I found a note. Let me, let me see if I can pull this out. So, uh, Mun, I've got this letter here that we found in a, an observer room uh, over at the monastery where we picked up uh, this one. I point over mm-hmm. at Athelflaed. And oh, interesting. I've never been there, actually. I've been to the monastery, but not into the observer room. Well, I was able to open it. Uh, ah, more it, evidence. Yeah, it, it took a, a bit of uh, fussing with the door in order for me to get it open. But Mm. uh, once inside, we found this letter uh, to a person named Frith from a person named Efenes. And it seems to imply that there are more observers in the Great Forest. Would you happen to know anything about that? No. Uh, Well, I should say I have heard that some observers went to hide there. It's a good place to hide. Uh, The names Frith and Efenes sound familiar. In fact, I have a dim recollection of something unpleasant about the name Frith. Hmm. He didn't seem like a well-liked guy from the letter. Yeah. Hmm. Well, perhaps you should watch out. So you've heard rumors that there are observers hiding out in the Great Forest. The last time I ever heard of any existing, I had heard of some being there. So you think that uh, maybe this council of two might know more about observers? That's possible. On the other hand, if they've made friends with the observers, they might be helping them hide out. They may not help you. And again, mm. perhaps you could persuade them as you've persuaded me. Well, that, that's my main reason for wanting to go to the Great Forest now that all my cards are on the table. So I, I propose we get in touch with Sigbert and try to set up some travel plans. Yeah, I agree. In any case, I wish you good luck. Time is of the essence. Make haste to Zabafeld and talk to Sigbert. So is that the plan? Mm -hmm. I think think so. Plan. So you guys just want to set out today, then? Yeah. I want to. I want to stop by a uh, weapons shop before because I think last time I bought a crossbow when what I really want is a longbow. Okay. Go ahead and um, I guess if you want, you can. I'll let you sell the crossbow for half half price and uh, switch to the longbow uh, just using the textbook prices. Okay. Oh, uh, so as you exit the uh, tower, Lumpen is standing there and with the, next to the coffin. He says, hi. What do and I do? What's the plan? You're coming with us. Yeah, we're going to the forest. Oh, okay. You ready for an adventure, Lumpen? Sure. What do, I, what do I do to help? Well, right now we're just traveling, so you <laughs> should keep us company. Can you can you clean my shield for me, Lumpen? I don't think I like cleaning that much right now. I think I'm kind of tired of that. Being back here in town, I I don't think I want to clean. What do you want to do, Lumpen? I I don't know. I I feel a weird new feeling. I I feel kind of angry. Ooh, you want to avenge Ben? Yeah. I think that that's what we're going to go try and do, too, as long as we can find out a way. So if you come with us, maybe we can get some revenge. Okay. Hey, Lumpen, you, yeah. want, a, you want a knife? There's nothing scarier than a towel and a knife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think I need a knife. Okay, well, let me know if you ever want to learn a little bit of uh, fighting, and uh, maybe you can defend yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've got Finn's spellbook. Ooh, Do okay. you cast spells? I am a spell book. What? <laughs> That's fair. I can be used by a wizard to memorize spells, just like a spell book, and I can retain them myself. I'm learning. Hmm. Can you can you cast any cantrips, Lumpen? I think so. Like like what? Um 
well, I've been working on this. And uh, he sticks out his hand and some little lights appear dancing in his palm. Now that's a neat trick you got Hair there class. right there. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I've been working on it real hard. Wow. Well, we're very proud of you, Lumpin. You're growing yeah. up so fast. <laughs> Thanks. Let's go. All right, let's All go. Right. You heard the rag. <laughs> <laughs> you guys start walking. Remember, your horses are back with Hans Miller. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, so you start walking. It takes a couple days to walk to Zauberfeld. Uh, nothing exciting happens along the way. Uh, you don't see any big increase in refugees or anything. Apparently, the river breaking has been recent enough that no one's made it this far north yet. Mm-hmm. You make it to Zauberfeld uh, in the evening on uh, the 16th of 7th month. You arrive in Zauberfeld. So it's the 16th. You arrive in the evening. The guard lets you in the gate. You can see that uh, Sigbert still got his stand set up there in the middle of uh, the square. I assume you're going to go straight to the shop, or you want to go to the inn, or what's your plan? I was thinking of going the, to the shop, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So you head for the shop. When you arrive, the first thing you see is his magical mirror, and the words floating on it say, Sigbert will be with you shortly. Oh. And then there's that little bell you can ring. You want to ring the bell? Yeah. Okay. Ring the bell. All right. Ding, ding, ding. The words change to say, Sigbert is on his way. And then Sigbert will be here any moment. Sigbert sticks his head out of the wall and says, Oh, hello, my dear friends. How are you? Hi there. What has the gnome changed into a rag? What happened? Oh, well, it's a long, sad story. Ben, he's uh, no no longer with us, I'm, I'm sad to say. Oh, dear. So you replaced him with a rag. No, no, this is our, our, our friend Lumpkin. Lumpin says, it, Lumpin. Oh, sorry. No, nope, <laughs> not, no, not Lumpkin. I, I'm awkward with names, sorry. Lump, it's Lumpin. Lumpin. This okay. is our friend Lumpin. The Sigbert looks a little confused, but says, I, I hope whatever makes you happy. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to see my price list? I've updated my list. Absolutely. Of course you do. Let me know if you have any questions. The bib of gluttony? Oh, that's one of my new favorites. Yes. I love these ones. <laughs> when wearing this bib, you may eat as much food as you like without becoming full. It has to be food, though. You can't eat just anything. Anything that would make you sick normally will still make you sick. Also, you must suffer the normal consequences of digestion the next day. No. Uh, that's a hard pass for me. Yeah. The sock gloves of hand feet? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, those are a uh, hot new item. Yes, wearing these socks on your feet turns your feet into hands, allowing you to do all the things with your feet that you could normally do with your hands. Here's the mechanics. It provides advantage on charisma or performance checks when playing an instrument because you've got an extra two hands, assuming that it's an instrument that you would benefit from having extra hands with, um, and on strength slash athletics checks for climbing, uh, but you treat all terrain as difficult when walking or running. Hmm. Eh. Nah. Loot of annoyance? Ah, uh, yes. So the loot of annoyance. Yes, the loot of annoyance. Uh, when activated, this self-playing loot loudly and badly strums itself. It is both out of tune and tone deaf, resulting in a horrible racket. Uh, so any creature within 60 feet that hears it and fails a wisdom saving throw is at a disadvantage on all attacks, saving throws, and ability checks. How wow, these that are one? incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I know, aren't they great? You know, uh, what I'm looking for really is just some basic potions of healing. You got uh, oh, yes, I've got those. Yes, I believe they're 50 gold pieces each. Ooh. Uh, uh, can I get three? Certainly. I'll go ahead and take one. Do we get a discount for buying in bulk? Mm. Oh, I suppose so. I'll let you buy them for 45 gold each because you're such good customers. Why, thank you. No, thank you. Anything else? Oh, I think we're looking over the wares right now. What's the uh, bag of Omni Sleep? Ah, uh, yes, it provides a comfortable night's rest. It's a sleeping bag, you see. Uh, but okay. if anyone is sleeping in the bag, everyone within 30 feet must also attempt to stay awake. Basically, if you're sleeping in the bag, everyone within 30 feet must make a wisdom save or also fall asleep. Mm. 
So I've heard about the loot of annoyance. What's the, um... Oh, shoot, I just... There it is. Arp of Harmony. Yes, it simply never needs to be tuned. Hmm. Have you moved from shoes to musical instruments lately? No, there just seems to be an influx of them lately. I buy instruments from and equipment and items from all sorts of different sources, and lately they seem to be instruments. I'm not sure why. Well, uh, we have a favor to ask. Uh, a favor from Mun. He sent from us... Mun? Yes. Really? Uh, indeed. That's where we got lumpin'. Ah, oh, that makes sense, I see. And what does Moon want? He wants you to assist us in getting quickly to, uh, where was it? The City of Two? Yes. Mm-hmm. City of Two. Ah, oh, I see. Yes, I could take you there quickly. Uh, could I see some sort of documentation from Moon? Well, there's Lumpen. Well, that doesn't mean that Mun is calling this in as his favor. We can show him the magic card without activating it, right? Like, he can see it. Well, there were two things he gave you. One yeah. was a card for the take to take to the City of Two. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. The Zone of Truth function on it could only be used once. Uh, but then he also gave you a regular card. I was just trying to conserve it. Ah. Uh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the regular card you could you could use more than one time. Okay. I, Lumpen, tell him. Tell him Mun sent us. Yeah. I, I worked for Mun for a long time, and then he had me clean a bunch of stuff, and I got really dirty. And then I rode on, uh, uh, I went to the this place. Um, can I tell him all about all the places we've been? I, I just think that he wants to know that Mun definitely sent us to turn in his favor. Yeah, that's true, what she said. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're not calling our little rag friend a liar, are you? Ugh. Very well. I suppose this seems plausible. So, you want to go to the City of Two? When do you want to go? As soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Really? Uh-huh. Right now? Well, I'm good as good as now, as good as ever. That yep. sounds swell. Yep. Uh, is there any other business to conduct before we do this? Oh, we, do we want our horses and cart? I can't take horses in a cart. You have to be able to fit through this mirror in order to be teleported. Whoa! What's your strength, Tara? Could you make those horses fit? Uh, I don't think that they're small enough <laughs> to fit through the mirror. <laughs> fair, fair enough. We'll, yeah. we'll leave Button Probably here. Probably leave, leave him out of danger anyway. Yeah. We'll have to babysit him along the way. Are you going to tell Hans Miller that? Yeah, are we oh, going yeah. to s- sell him? What? Hmm. Mm. He can just hang on to them in the meantime. Didn't we, didn't we board them for a certain amount of time? or I don't remember the whole deal we had with Hans Miller. I'm not super worried about it. Worst case scenario, he can just keep the horses, I guess. He's not going to turn them into glue. Yeah, he's not going to no. eat them, is he? Those are good horses. I'm, I'm sure a farmer would know what to do with good horses like yeah, Bud Bart. Yeah, they're lovely horses. <laughs> Very well. If you're ready, then I'm ready. Uh-huh.